Hello again. Uh, I thought this time I'd do a little bit of an introduction to Zapier. I'm told that's the correct way to pronounce it. Uh, I'd made a bit of a mistake and assumed that people knew what Zapier was and quite a few people have been asking me about it and, and sort of what it's used for, what it's capable of. So um, in this video, I'm just gonna sort of go generally over um, what Zapier is for not so much exactly how to set it up. I'll just give you a few examples on how I've used it. Um, try to keep it quick as usual, might fail, we'll see. Um, currently away at a little Airbnb run by a friend of mine about an hour south of Sydney um, with a couple of other my uh, entrepreneur friends. <laughs> and so that's why I've got the lav mic this time rather than the normal one. Hopefully the audio will be all good. Right, so. Um, basically, what I can't do is give you an exact, like this is how you use Zapier in your business. Because every business is different and this is just one sort of tool to streamline different parts of your business. So, at a very low level, it's kind of an if this, then that kind of tool. So if this happens, then do that. That's the absolute most basic level of what you might do in Zapier. Um, and obviously everyone's using different tools. So you can see on uh, this dashboard page here, that some of the different kind of apps you can use. So you might say when there's a new spreadsheet row in Google Sheets, then put something in my Trello uh, or my task management tool. So that's just one example. Uh, these apps, you know, it supports a lot of apps out of the box. Um, we'll go into some more advanced videos. We'll actually go into ways you can kind of talk to other apps that aren't supported by Zapier. You can't talk to everything, but some things you can kind of work around, uh, but we'll get to that. Um, so normally what you're gonna do is replace data entry. So, you know, if you're copying and pasting names and emails and stuff like that um, between, you know, if you're putting it in three or four locations to keep all your CRMs and to-do lists and everything up to date, we're gonna fix that with Zapier. Um, that's the basic stuff. Um, hopefully through this video series, you'll also get some cool ideas about what you can do. Like as I'm going through, you might sort of see and go, oh man, I can use something like that in my business. That's the plan anyway, because I can't give you the exact things to do. That's just not possible. Um, anyway, let's get into it. So I'm just gonna start with a very simple example um, of this Zap that I've created here which I called Add New AppSumo Deals to Trello. Um, and this is using an RSS feed. So an RSS feed is some kind of code uh, that sites that regularly update um, use to update other services. So if I've got a blog reader, I wanna read lots of blogs, that will actually be pulling the RSS feeds of all those blogs into one spot so I can see what's new and what's updated. So in this case, I'm basically subscribing to the AppSumo RSS feed and what I wanna do is when there's a new deal that they've got up on their site, I wanna uh, create that as a to-do in my Trello, which is what I use for a to-do system. Could be anything, could be Asana or a teamwork projects, or whatever you happen to be using for task management. So I create a trigger, and this is the first thing that's in uh, pretty much every zap you'll create. So it's, an, it's something that's going to fire off this zap. Uh, this workflow essentially. Um, in this case, um, I've put the RSS app in and all it needs is the feed URL, which I've put in here. Sometimes it'll ask for a lot of other things. Uh, in this case, you know, none of this is required for me, so I've just left it all as default. Uh, and then you, it asks you to test the step and I'm gonna do that just so I can demo uh, to you uh, what happened, what kind of data comes out of this. So every trigger will have different kind of data. So um, in this case, I'm gonna view what it's, the, what it's brought back and we've got, um, we've got a, it's an identifier basically, a GUID, but we've got a description. So this is pulled this out of the website, um, sorry, out of the RSS feed. Um, it's got a title, it's got a publication date, it's got, uh, the creator, so you might have an author, um, if, you, if it's a multi-author blog. Anyway, this is just the data that comes out of RSS. So every trigger's got different data. For example, if this was someone signing up to your CRM, you might have first name, last name, email, tags. It, so it's different every time. 
and you'll see where these get used uh, later uh, in the action, which we'll do now actually. So if I, so we've got we've got a new item in that RSS feed. I'm going to create a card, which for me is a to do. So you, you basically connect it to your Trello account, which I'm going to not go through in this video. Internet is not doing well today. Anyway, um, so. I've basically picked the board, so this is kind of like a project in Trello uh, and the part, like the, the to-do list, um, so today's list. Uh, and then I've put in some text, so I said I want the to-do item to be the, a new AppSumo deal. And this is a variable that's come out of that trigger. And that is, these are available through this drop-down, so you can see from step one, which is here, new item in feed, these are all the different bits of data that I can use. And in this case, I've put the title here. I've got the original link and the description in the description of my task. So when that comes into my Trello, I can see that there's a new AppSumo deal because I put that in manually. This is the name of it. This is the link. This is the description. Um, there's a bunch of other settings. You know, I can say I want to put it at the top of my to-do list. These are all very much specific for the action type that you're using. So these are all the different things you can do with Trello. Um, and I've just left them all as default because I don't care. All I wanted was a red label on it uh, to make it stand out so I can go and read it right away. That's it. So that's a very, very simple uh, zap. So new item in feed, created item in my to-do list. Very, very simple. So taking it once or a couple of steps further, there's two more types of uh, actions you can have, or two more steps, I guess, in Zapier, and that's a search and a filter. So you still see here we've got a trigger, a search, a filter, and an action. So the one thing I haven't done here is have multiple actions. So you, that's also an option. This this is what we call a multi-step zap. Uh, so so that could actually be maybe in this one I just wanted to go trigger action action. Maybe I want to create a card in my to-do list and put it in a Google spread, uh, Sheets spreadsheet. So that's another option. Um, worth noting though that these multi-step zaps are only on paid accounts. So uh, if you're not on a paid account, it's pretty much if then, that's it. Um, but man, I save so much time on this, the, the money I spend on Zapier is well worth it. So this example, this is someone that signed up for our software. So this is the billing system we use, probably unknown to most of you, uh, but it's just Basically, someone signs up, we create a subscription in the billing system. And this is a cool little um, tool, actually, that I want to, uh, this, um, sorry, flow I want to go through in a more advanced video. But basically, what I'm doing is lead scoring everyone that signs up. And if they match a certain criteria, put them in my to-do list to see, uh, you know, to, to check them out and follow up and see, contact them personally, maybe. Um, but anyway, to do that, uh, there's another utility here that Zapier works with called um, Lead Score, and uh, all it needs is an email address. There's that slow internet again. So all I'm doing is, on new trigger, all I'm feeding it is the email that came out of step one, right? And it returns a bunch of information. Uh, that information includes like number of employees. It's kind of not always accurate, but um, the point is some data comes back. That's the only point you need to understand here. Um, so that I can then run a filter on it. And in this case, I'm filtering by, really should have clicked that earlier. I didn't learn my lesson by now, but uh, number of employees is greater than three and the customer fit segment is good or very good is basically what I've said there. So. That's just uh, what I wanted to show you is this is a filter. So the zap will run, it will go, the trigger will happen, it'll do the search and it'll hit the filter. Now, if these don't match, it stops right there. So that's about the only real workflow you can do in Zapier. It's, it's just continue if. There's no sort of else path. I can't say if these don't match, do something else. Um, there's a kind of workaround you have to do in Zapier to make that happen. Um, we'll get into that another time. But for now, uh, we're just gonna assume that these uh, criteria were met and we jumped through to the action. And this could be anything, again, add it to my to-do list, put it in a spreadsheet. Um, this is a really cool tool called Digest, which I'll go into uh, another time. Um, but that's pretty much it. That's how Zapier works. And that's what I wanted to show you in this video. 
Um, I think that's that's about it. Um, I'll call it there and I'll come back for another video uh, very shortly.